All right, hello everybody. It's me, Aaron from Apogee Locomotive Works, and today I'm going to be going over how I paint my models. So of course, what I'm gonna go over is freelance paint schemes. And we're gonna go with a one of my own models, one of my uh, Whitcomb 50 ton two axle shells that fit over the sing, uh, single Stanton drive. I'm gonna have a few of these on my roster, so might as well start with this one. Now, all my models for this road are orange or yellow with a red with a red uh, top, like the cab roof and everything. Here's uh, early fireless I've done. Um, this is a street running short line slash into urban, so it has a lot of small equipment. As you can see, here's a box cab I've done. Yeah, here's a, another one I've done, a yellow, and I still need to give it the red top. And I've already painted the roof of this model, a nice bright Santa Fe red. I'm going to paint the base color first. The way I'm going to do this is whatever's easiest to mask. Um, that's always the best way to do it. For instance, I could paint the gray first. But then I'd have to mask off the frame, not only up here, but down here too, on, on like the actual floor of the frame, the walkway, sorry. And it'd probably be easier just to run tape up around the rest of the whole cabin engines. So we'll just do that first. Now, I paint with true color paint, just because, you know, it's what I'm used to. Although I've used scale coat and I love it. I love how um, it comes in much bigger jars. Um, it's kind of cheaper too, but it paints just as well. Um, I'm out of Milwaukee orange, which is what I used for everything. And then I did a light, like a really light um, discoloring on this one. Because, you know, it's a fire, all this heat and everything. But uh, I'm thinking the newer ver the newer units of my railroad are going to be yellow with red. Kind of fit in with the C&W, all that. So I got my true color C&W yellow. And we're going to get started. Now, I drink a lot of Coke. So I have this little 3D printed thing here full of coke caps. These are what I use for the mi mixing bottles. You don't need to spend money on mixing bottles. Uh, you just need to spend money on the bottles with the coke in it or whatever soda you prefer and keep the caps. About there is good probably. It's, it's kind of what you feel is right but I'm gonna mix it. You could shake it, but I don't like it shaken. I like it stirred. I'm gonna talk about my airbrush. You don't need to spend three thousand dollars on an airbrush. You can, and it will make your life a lot easier. But you don't need to. This airbrush is a Central Pneumatic airbrush, and there was a pretty decent Chinese airbrush that had this little battery compressor, so you didn't need to fire up a really loud compressor. I mean, I'll... it's not bad. <laughs> Um, compared to alternative versions. Also, this one allows me to brush when people don't want to hear it. Uh, the cool thing about this is that this is not the original um, airbrush. This is this is um, my Harbor Freight when my son. No, actually, sorry, the, the Central Pneumatic one died. I don't even remember what this one is. It's not an expensive one though, nevertheless. And this uh, airbrush that you see online. It comes with the compressor. You can unscrew the old airbrush and put like a $300 one on there. It's great. So I definitely recommend getting the airbrush on eBay with this compressor. It is the most convenient airbrush in the universe. And you can just take off the old airbrush and put the, anything on this um, little mini compressor. I try to get one layer done before I go up but sometimes that just never happens. Just get a light coat over everything. The needle is not original, none of it is. It is a very much a Frankenstein airbrush.
And mo yeah. Uh, I got a few Frankenstein knocks I have to give it. Oof. There you go. Alright. Yeah. It is full of personality, and I will cry when it breaks. One thing when you do airbrushing is it's all about patience. When I was starting, one of the biggest fears was, oh no, I'll make a big sludge and ruin it somehow, or the paint will start dripping. It's always good to be a bit, I don't know, gentle. Don't, don't get it all done in one shot when you do your layers. Stay a few inches back, and you'll get a nice even coat. If you don't get a nice even coat, and there's a little open spot, uh, like I got some on the rip here, go at it at a distance. The slower the color appears, the more control you have over it. Now, of course, I just kind of start putting paint where I feel it needs it. Um, and then fill in the gaps like the way I said it. So for instance, we're getting a little bit weak right there. So I'll take care of that from a distance. Kind of bounce around the model. One thing I love about these Whitcomb shells, one thing I'm really proud of, and it just popped up when I started putting that layer there. And I don't know if it'll pick it up, but the bolt pattern in the hood and I'm really glad I started getting the mono chrome printers. Look at that. That looks good already. Yeah, let's refocus. There we go. I just love this so much. It's my favorite model. It's a sin that I haven't had one in service yet. Yeah. I'm really liking this so far. Let me get back down here. I'm gonna go on this side now. Mix it up. Dang it. Frankenstein airbrush, don't fail me now. Just something fun about doing small units like this. They're more interesting to me have a whole lot more character. Down. Clean up some of that detail. Okay, looks like on it. Yeah, it looks like the cab and a lot of the lower detail down here really needs to be addressed. Even on camera, you can probably see it getting brighter. As much as I can. Okay, so as you can see, we're pretty much there. But I'm gonna go, I have a bit more paint left. So I'm gonna go over a little bit more. Just in areas that I think need it. I think we've gotten pretty much everywhere that can be addressed. So let's let that dry. I'll show you some close-ups and We'll get to the next bit, the masking. Okay, we are back. The model is pretty much dry. And now we're going to go into masking. Now masking is kind of a necessary evil. Not very many people enjoy masking, but if you don't do it 
as if you were engaged, you're going to get a less than adequate result. So it's kind of terrible, but it's a necessary part. And if you can master it, um, if you can master this discipline, then you'll have some pretty good models going. Now, as I was talking before, the way I'm going to mask this is masking off the cab and the engines because that way I can paint the frame kind of a darkish black and yeah, I won't have to worry about, you know, I could just spray it and I won't worry about, I won't have any problems with up here, just down here. Now, luckily, my airbrush has some pretty good control, so I shouldn't have to go overboard on the masking, but I certainly don't want to leave any parts that I might hit uncovered. So, I obviously use Tamiya masking tape because, you know, and this is the standard masking tape, not the white bendy type, that stuff. Um, no, I haven't quite mastered that yet. But, uh, yeah, this takes some... Turbo concentration. I may go silent. I'm a man. I can't multitask. Yeah, I hate this, by the way, if you haven't noticed. Um, is to get it as close to the line that you want to get as possible. This is this is what I like to refer to as natural human anti-aliasing. Oh, uh, and it sucks. Come on. I like to have a little stick here. This is my mixing stick. But it's many other things. Oh, it can be anything I want it to be. Try to keep it on the line. This is a good opportunity to prototype some new cuss words. Hang in. I can't say things. Oh, right there. Right there. I've gotten it where I don't want it. I'm gonna. Carefully try to scribe it off. Oh, 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 oh. Hang in. Precision here. Well, now, now, okay. Please. Yes. Yes. I win. I win. Okay, now let's get back to it. Try to smoothen out this edge here. Oh, and we're back. We're back, by the way. We're back on the other one. So let's try to get that. Okay, this one's gone smoother. Apparently, I've decided this is the strategy for masking. Spin. Spin the dowel. Okay, and we're not even all the way around. That's okay. Because you have more masking tape. That's enough. Okay. Take two. We're gonna... Whoopsie. We're gonna start right there. Right there. Turn. Magnificent. Oh. Oh, bud. We're getting there. Right, so this is a really bad position to be in. As you can see, we don't have enough tape. And I thought I did. We're fine. Because we got more. Use, use common lines. Oh, I don't like masking in the same way I don't like decaling. It can move. It, they, they move around. Oh. Oh, I did it. I did it. I masked it. Masking successful. Or is it? For we shall check. We must check and inspect the lines. This is the human anti-aliasing I was talking about. I don't need to worry about sca uh, scraping the paint on here because I'm, I'm gonna be painting it anyway. But... This can go stuff on a Lego. Look at that. 
I just like to scribe around it. Come on. You gotta be careful. Make sure everything on the bottom line where it's most important is adhering. Which it's not. Oh, it's finally doing it. Okay. Careful. Right. That's good. So, it is now time to get brushing again. But not with a brush, with air. Um, I'm thinking about going with Lark Dark Gray, though. And then... Using, like, a... Or, yeah. Or using a flat black, but... I'm probably going to use Lark Dark, because it has a bit more... It's more gray. You can do more stuff with it. But I've also seen some cast iron that's painted flat black. I think we'll go with the black. Yeah, change of pace, we'll go black. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Let's get painting. I think we'll have enough. It is black, it goes through easily. Now, normally I'd paint, I'd uh, clean this out, but it's black versus what we were painting earlier, so I ain't too worried. It's just gonna turn black. And Crusto has done just that. Frankenstein brush, good. Alright. Now black is pretty easy to paint. Cause... Well... You know, you just make sure everything gets black. If you, if, if you're happy with, you have a big fat grin on your paint, on, when on your face, while you're doing this, you're doing it right. It's like, oh, look at that. This thing is gonna be awesome. It's gonna be the best thing ever. When people think of Whitcomb, they usually think of those big 65, 80 tonners that were shipped to Europe, and some of them stayed in, U in the States. But they also made, much like Davenport, HK Porter, many other locomotives, including these adorable little 50-ton switchers, which are apparently really common. There's two of these exact same locomotives in existence. They may have been the same one, I don't know. Uh, one of them is uh, Harvard Terminal. I think it's uh, what's lettered. Supposedly it's been officially retired. Uh, something to do with a uh, traction motor. Couldn't fix it. I don't know why. Um, it's on display, I think now. But I think there's some video of it. But I mean, these things in theory could kept they could have been kept going. I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. There's a lot of 45 tonners out there right now. Yeah, this has a few details that need to get hit from different sides. I have these little hooks, for example. I think that's it. Hang on. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Okay. I have made way too much black. 
I don't know what to do. So what I'm gonna do, this is when you get mixing bottles, not for mixing. Not for mixing, but for storing. This is all in your dry, and it will be taken over by the black. This is a completely empty bottle, by the way, so there's no, no contamination. So we'll have black um, mixture in here for later, and then we'll wash, and then we'll wash the the brush out with the last. Just the uh, last thinner I have, because black will eliminate, it will mess up every other color I put in this airbrush. Shiny. Okay, I'm thinking it's time to take off the masking tape. Now this may seem like Christmas, but do it slowly because you might yank off the paint otherwise. Oh, so slowly. Oh, oh. Presto. Look at that. There it is. Now, I like to think that I'm pretty okay at airbrushing, but it's quite obvious my masking tape job was not optimal. Um, I'm definitely going to improve on that. Right there, that's not too good. Back here's not too good. But this is my own process, and I'm still learning. I'm gonna put the little red roof on. Oh, look at him! Look at him! Look at that little guy. Look at him. Little, little guy that we're gonna use for industrial switching. I'm really looking forward to putting DCC lights and sound in, in it. So, yeah, I might do some weathering, but I'm probably not going to. Uh, I'm going to keep this guy clean or relatively clean. Might do a little bit of dust here and there, but I think he deserves to be kept clean. So, yeah, that's a whole um, airbrushing job. I have a freelance locomotive. Um, I hope you watched, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, take a look at our store, ApogeeLocoWorks.com. Uh, do look more at the channel and subscribe for more, and I will see you next time. Take care. <gasps> oh. Someone just come on. Hmm. Yeah. Here. I think that's okay.